We will be covering loft bombing, CCIP and auto delivery methods. These apply to both dumb and precision guided bombs. For the sake of this tutorial I'm assuming you've either seen my video on weapons programming linked to the side or below in the description or otherwise understand how to program your weapons for release. I will be using a weapons range object mod during this video. I've provided a link in the description below to it. If you would like to skip to a specific section, click on the timecode in the description below or skip to the time shown on screen now. Starting with CCIP, Continuously Computed Impact Point. This is an easy point and shoot method, used for quick acquisition of targets and visually engaging them. Ensure you have a weapon selected and are in air to ground master mode. Select the CCIP delivery mode for your weapon, approach your target, enter a dive, and put the vertical azimuth steering line over your target. Watch the bomb cross symbol move down this line. Note how it changes as it reaches the bottom. This means the impact point is now within the bounds of your HUD. Keep your aircraft lined up with the target and press the pickle button as the cross passes over your target. It will blink as the bombs are released. CCIP works best for dive bombing or high speed passes in shallow dives. Remember to avoid putting negative G's, especially as you release the bomb. This can push the bomb back up into your aircraft. Best practice is to let the bomb cross move over your target, rather than try and actively fly the aircraft to raise the cross onto target. Avoid releasing bombs whilst the aircraft is unstable from manoeuvres and allow a second or two to stabilise. If you approach the target too low, the break X cue will appear, indicating an unsafe release. This is a warning that fragments from your bomb are likely to impact your own aircraft if you release now. This happens when the velocity vector on your HUD is below the pull-up queue. Because CCIP is an up-close and personal method of attack, you will probably be put in harm's way when performing these attacks. You should therefore take all possible precautions. Keep an eye out for AAA or IR threats. It is a good idea to passively defend yourself with occasional flare drops as you run in and out of the target area, especially if you're not certain where the threats are. Finally, you can use waypoints as a visual aid to help locate a target for CCIP engagement. Select the waypoint your target is at. Press the waypoint designate button on the bottom right. Now you can see a diamond on your heading tape pointing towards the target. As you close within 90 degrees off the nose to the target, an arrow appears pointing to assist in acquisition. Turn until the diamond is within your HUD. Because we are using waypoint designation, the system has entered auto bombing mode. However, once we've visually acquired the location of the waypoint, we can press the pinky button on the joystick, which is the weapon's undesignate button. This will disable the auto bombing mode and hide the waypoint diamond, so make sure you visually acquire the target first. You can now proceed with a normal CCIP bombing run. Next up we have the auto bombing mode. You will use this mostly for level bombing, however it can be used whilst in a dive or even climbing as we'll get into later. Auto mode allows you to drop bombs from safe altitudes above the reach of IR SAMs and gunfire, however it is less accurate than CCIP, sometimes you can do a perfect run and it'll still miss. This is where precision guided munitions become very useful, eliminating this limitation. The further away from the target you are when you release your weapons, the more precise you will need to be as small errors are multiplied by the distance. Generally, you will want to use auto bombing mode on clustered targets of units or buildings to account for the inaccuracy. Unless you are using precision guided weapons such as a laser guided bomb. Auto requires a designated point as a target, either by designating a waypoint just like before, or by using the HUD to mark a target. With auto release mode programmed, press the sensor control switch on your joystick up. This will set your focus to the HUD, a little dot will appear in the centre of your velocity vector to indicate this. 
you should also see a dashed line leading down to a pipper. This is known as the ball and chain. With the HUD focused, you now need to fly the pipper over a target and press the TDC Depress to lock it. You will notice that if you point your velocity vector over the ball pipper, it'll combine. This means you can point your velocity vector at your target with attached pipper and press the TDC Depress action to lock it. You can then use the TDC slew controls to adjust the point you have just locked, shown by a diamond on your HUD. Once your target is locked, the method is the same for both waypoint and manually HUD designated targets. On the right hand side of your HUD, you will see auto, referencing to the bombing mode, a number and rel, this is the time until release, and another number followed by TGT, this is the distance to your target in nautical miles. A diamond on the heading tape at the top indicates the direction of your target, when within 90 degrees it will show an arrow on the HUD pointing towards it with a number of degrees off from your nose displayed. Once you've steered towards your designated target, you will notice you have a vertical line, the azimuth steering line. This is to guide your aircraft onto target. Follow the azimuth steering line and aim to keep it centred with the vertical line on your velocity vector. A critical part of how accurate your bombs will be comes down to how well you can align these together. Roll your aircraft left or right to centre the azimuth steering line. You may wish to use auto throttle control during this stage to lessen your workload. Make small corrections and then allow the aircraft to drift across then level out. Do not try to directly chase the line as this can result in pilot induced oscillations. Keep an eye on the time until release on the right of your HUD. As it counts down below 5, hold down the pickle button. You will see a release cue, a horizontal line, fall from above. Your bombs will release when this meets the velocity vector. Let go of the pickle button once all bombs have been released. Do not worry about keeping the aircraft flying perfectly level as the system can handle it. However, avoid making manoeuvres as you get close to release. This can lead to throwing the bomb off your aircraft at an angle. If you are not holding the pickle button down as the release cue passes over the velocity vector, no bombs will be released. Once your bombs are away, time until release on the right of your HUD will now switch to TTI or time to impact. This is when your bombs will reach its target. This is convenient if you wish to know when to look at the target area to assess the impact and damage. Generally, you will want to start an auto bombing run from around 8 to 10 miles out, although you can do it from less if you're quick about it or already lined up on the target. Finally, we have loft deliveries. These are performed within the auto bombing mode itself. Lofts of up to 45 degrees can be calculated by the aircraft's computers. A loft varies from a typical auto bomb run in that you'll be throwing your bomb ballistically at the target. This gives you a few significant advantages. Primarily, you can attack a target from a low starting altitude without having to fly close or over the target area. You can easily throw a bomb a distance of 4 miles or greater. This works well in moderate and high threat environments. The approach to the loft run is similar to a normal auto run. However, this method works best with pre-planned waypoints as designated targets. Run in at your target at high speed. I personally like to go for about 600 knots or higher. You can loft from any altitude, but generally you will want to employ this from low level. Lofting bombs can happen pretty quickly and will require you to be fairly precise. At 600 knots, as you reach 6.5 miles away from the target, go full power, pull up hard to about 30 degrees. Release the stick and allow the plane to settle between 30 and 35 degrees. Ensure to keep the azimuth steering line centred and avoid using pitch inputs during this time. Press and hold the pickle button and wait for the bombs to release. Allow a second or two for the bomb to clear your aircraft and then turn away from the target area. Cut back to military power and egress from the target. You can perform lofts at higher speeds or angles, but take this into consideration when you do your run. If you try and loft a bomb too early, or with insufficient airspeed, you can actually find yourself in a climb, with the bomb release timer counting up. Conversely, doing it too late could result in a release before you have a chance to stabilise your aircraft. The faster you are going, the further away from your target you should start your loft. The same applies if you loft from altitude. This technique, much like level bombing, 
is not accurate enough to hit anything smaller than a building or a concentration of targets. Accuracy is highly dependent on how well you can follow the steering lines and make sure the aircraft is unloaded and stable without pitch inputs prior to release. If you use this in a location that has a radar guided SAM for example, it's important that you make the loft as short as possible to avoid lingering in a climb as you wait for the release of your weapons. Since you'll probably be low to the ground as you run into your target, it is also very important you don't overfly hostile positions, as such it's best suited for carefully pre-planned missions. When used correctly, you can use a loft to attack a position protected by IR SAMs, guns and even radar SAMs without putting yourself in their engagement range. Or, from below the radar of a long range system, you can pop up, attack and drop back down into the hills before they have a chance to engage you. If you're struggling to get the aircraft aligned on target prior to release, starting your loft from a greater distance will give you more time. Just remember that starting too early can result in a considerable climb before the weapon's release, exposing you to potential threats or losing too much airspeed, reducing the distance you'll be able to throw your bombs. You will require some practice to get this right, and unfortunately the Hornet does not include a loft start prompt, so you will have to do some experimentation to figure out good release speeds and distances for yourself. When we gain access to JDAMs and other precision guided weapons, this will make lofting a very effective delivery method. If you're watching this video in the future, you can probably disregard this next section. From my experience, it appears that the most accurate bomb for loft bombing right now is the MK-83. The Mark 82 and Mark 84 always seem to miss their target, but more significantly they always miss the target in a similar way. I've done some tests and provided an example. Here you can see the results. I lofted all the bombs from roughly the same starting conditions. The lighter Mark 82 will always land long, in the same general area even, whilst the Mark 84s will land short, again in a similar area each time. The Mark 20 rock eyes will land in roughly the right location when you have a burst height of 300 feet. However, high bursts will land further away. Meanwhile, the Mark 83 will land more or less on target every time. I've tried this at different ground altitudes and seen the same result. However, I have noticed that mission temperature plays a role in the accuracy. In hot weather, even the Mark 83 will go long, and in cold weather, it'll land short. In the examples I gave, I had the temperature set to 20 degrees centigrade with zero wind. This leads me to conclude that the auto bombing system is not getting calculated correctly and the system does not account for temperature. We're looking at something that's very much work in progress for the moment, either lacking the features required to program in the environment and the weapons, or that auto bombing should handle this automatically and is simply not complete. So if you are going to do automatic loft bombing, I highly recommend you only use Mark 83's 20 degrees C and minimal wind if any, since we lack the features required to account for these in our automatic calculation. Hopefully we'll see a fix in the near future. Thanks for watching and take care.